Hi, my name is Cindy Mackey, and I'm the Associate Registrar here at the Curry Museum of Art. For the past two years, I was working on a project that was funded by the National Endowment for the Arts. This project allowed us to expand our online collections database. The database contains every object that we have in the collection. If you go to our website, you can actually view all the objects that we have in our collection. So with this project that we started in July 2012, we were able to greatly enhance the information that we offer to our online visitors. Here's a brief tutorial on searching the online collections database at the Courier Museum of Arts website. If you're interested in searching the collection, you're going to click on Collections up here in the top toolbar and go down to Browse the Collections. And then you're going to click in the center of the screen where it says Learn more about our latest online collections project. This will take you directly to the collections project page. This project page here explains more about the project that we completed in the past two years. If you're interested in seeing the objects, click down here on Selected Objects. This provides a list of all the objects that are part of the grant project. So if you want to learn more about the objects included in the project, you're just going to click on one of the thumbnails on this page. For today's example, we're going to choose Portrait of a Musician. So click on the object, and then the object record appears. Up here in the left-hand corner, we see the artist's name. If you click on this link here, this will bring you to the artist record, which is a new feature of this project. If you want to see more objects by the artist in the collection, click on View Objects by this Artist. Fortunately, we only have one object by this artist, but if we had more, you would see them all listed in the screen here. Next, we're going to click back to go back to the artist record. Click once more, and this brings you back to the object record. If you want to get a close-up of the image, you're going to click on to the right-hand side below the image where it says View Zoomable Image. Click on that, and you'll see the zoomable image. Below the image, you can zoom in, see what the ring he has on his finger. You can look at his eyes, his hair. This also helps looking for artist signatures in the painting. And when you're done, you can just zoom back out and close the window. And if you notice here where it says on view, we keep track of all the objects that are on view at the museum. So if you're planning your visit, you can check to see if an object's on view. Though I'd always recommend if you're coming to see a particular object to call the museum first, just to make sure that it actually is on view, as we change objects very frequently in the galleries. So you can click here to print this page, and all the information that you see here on the screen will print out. If you're interested in sharing this Im image and object record, you can click this button here where it says Share, and you can share it on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, StumbleUpon, and 293 more options if you're interested. What's really interesting about this project is all the information that's below this sentence here. Click on the links below for more information. This is where we have all the extended essays. You're going to click on More Information, and then the essay appears that was part of this project for the past two years. You can just scroll down and see all the information. So for these 90 essays, each essay has a description. It's a paragraph long de describing the object, as if you were standing in front of the object at the museum. Then we have a context and analysis section, which talks about more about the artist and the painting and its relationship to the period and time in which it was created. Then we have a connection section, which shows how the painting relates to the Courier's collection, or to New Hampshire, or to Manchester. Then we also have links to other objects within the collection. You can click on the link there, and it will bring you to the other object record. You're just going to click back, click back to the object record, click again on more information, and here you can see the writer who wrote this essay, her notes, and also the bibliography if you're interested in learning more information. Now if you want to learn about where this piece was on view, you can click on Exhibition History. This information was pulled from museum files, so this is the information that we have where this piece was on display. If you're interested in learning more about the provenance of the object, you're going to click on Provenance. This just gives the history of the object before it came to the Courier Museum of Art. You can close this information by just clicking on the links here and scrolling up. And that hides all the information. This is an example of an object record that has a gallery label as part of the object record. So this gallery label is from a past exhibition in 2010. If we have a gallery label, we include it with the object record and we cite from the exhibition where it came from the museum. Here's an example of a New Hampshire artist biography that we have included in the database. We're going to choose John Brooks. We're going to click on the object, 
and I'm going to click on the name. All the artist names are hi highlighted as links. And here we can see the artist biography for John Brooks. We have approximately 32 artist biographies for local artists, and we'll be adding more soon. Again, if you want to click on objects by this artist, you click on view objects by this artist. And here's a list of all the objects that are part of the collection by John Brooks. Again, if you see this one doesn't have a zoomable image, but it does say view additional e images, you're going to click just below the image. And here are some more detailed shots of all the images we have for that piece. Now, if you happen to see an image that does not have a zoomable image, that means that piece is still under copyright, and we don't own the copyright to pr produce a high-res image. And usually you'll find those with the copyright credit line underneath. OK, we're going to click on one more object, the salver. Here you can see we have the view additional images and the view zoomable image. And if you're interested in taking our survey so we can learn more about what you'd like to see on our object record, you can click on Take Our Survey. And this brings you to a pop-up survey that you can take. If you're interested in searching the collection, you can actually just type in an artist's last name. So we're going to type in Benton. And this will bring up all the works by Thomas Hart Benton in the collection. If you're interested in searching more, you can go to the search under collections up here. This brings you to the search page for advanced search, where you can search by date, artist name. You can For artist, you're going to hit artist sort name, begins with. And we're going to pick the letter F. And then a pop-up will appear. And you can click on an artist. We're going to go with Daniel Chester French. And then hit Find. And this will bring up the piece that we have in the collection by Daniel Chester French. Again, you can see it has the magnifying glass and then the book symbol, which means it has zoomable images and interpretive text. So here we see the view zoomable image below the, the object. And then here's the extended essay that we have that was done in the 2004 project, which was the precursor to our current project that we just finished.